Hello and welcome to CMC Markets Weekly Trading Outlook for the week of September 22nd, 2014. My name is Colin Sosinski, Chief Market Strategist. Although this week isn't going to see the same amount of news or the same level of news as we saw last week and perhaps not quite the same amount of fireworks, we're still looking at a quite an active week for trading with a lot of follow through and a few new developments. We'll start off with the UK. The uh, result of the Scottish referendum was about 55% on the no side. This was taken very positively by markets. It was a little bit stronger of a no vote than expected. So we've seen quite a bit of action to wrap up this week on the in the UK markets and likely to see some more trading continue uh, into next week. Uh, in particular, we expect to see that the uh, British pound will remain active against a number of currencies. In this case, we'll take a look here at the trading in the pound relative to the US dollar. Uh, over the last few months, between July and mid-September, the pound had sold off dramatically. Part of this was due to the rally in the US dollar. Part of this was also due to concerns that the Scottish vote might go the, uh, to the yes side and that in the brunt the Sterling really took the brunt of this. It's become extremely oversold and has started to bounce back even before the vote started. Looking at a larger size chart here, uh, we'll see that it had come back extremely uh, rapidly. It had a good rally uh, initially. It's come up about to about a 23% retracement of the decline from July and uh, actually had spiked up towards its 38% retracement level, which was right in line with the 165.00 round number as well. It slipped back, but remember we had a pretty good run already going into the vote it had rallied from 160 and change up to uh, up to 165 so that was a pretty good move in a few days not a surprise that we're seeing some profit taking but we're also seeing a general uptrend build and with the vote now uh, having been completed we may see the pound continue to recover uh, on the other hand, the action in the uh, FTSE the UK 100 has been a little bit different following news as we bring up the larger chart here, we'll see that it uh, it had not c declined as much through July and September as the pound did. In fact, heading into the vote, it was trading within 100 points of a major high here at 6,900. And of course, when we did get the rally, yes, we did get a bump, but it ran smack into resistance here at 6,900. This channel resistance continues to hold. I if we do see any kind of a, a pullback, we have uh, initial support here around these uh, shadow lows in and around 6,770. Uh, there's also more possibly here around 6700 in a if we do get a bit of a correction in the UK 100 if we do manage to get a breakout the first big test would be this 7000 round number resistance level up here uh, moving on, we also have uh, f potential follow-through uh, into the new week from uh, news on the corporate side. We have the, uh, to uh, wrap up the uh, the week's just ending, we have the Alibaba making its trading debut, looking like it's going to open higher. Uh, Apple, however, has been uh, a little bit on the uh, quiet and, and somewhat disappointing almost. It's pretty flat on uh, on Friday here, and it's actually leveled off heading in into the iPhone debut here. It had a huge surge through much of 2014, it's leveled off in this 96 to 104 dollar range with uh, 100 the century mark and a big round psychological number providing the midpoint of this trading channel. Apple had become extremely overbought through the uh, head, through the spring and into the summer. It looks like it's starting to work that off. So uh, iPhone 6, huge expectations had already been built into the price. They'd really have to sell a lot of them to to move the uh, the needle on that one. So it looks as though we're heading into a consolidation range for Apple. What is interesting in heading into the new week is that we're starting to see more interest coming into BlackBerry. Uh, BlackBerry, of course, has been uh, had been beleaguered for, for quite some time, and, and rightly so. The company has struggled for many years, but it actually has the potential to be more active this week, perhaps, than Apple. Uh, BlackBerry has been climbing over the last month or so, and it's now trading back above the $10 level US and uh, trading near 11 with its next resistance up in the 1180 to $12 range. This has the potential to be a big week for BlackBerry uh, for two reasons. First of all, it has a product event scheduled for Wednesday. This will be the first big product launch since new CEO John Chen took over and also the first big product launch for BlackBerry since last year's 
uh, BlackBerry 10 launch, which ended up to be such a major failure for the uh, company. So people will be really keen on this to see, can BlackBerry turn it around? Can they still stay in the in the hardware market and, and, and be a player? Or are they going to be more of a player going forward on the software side? We'll see. Following that, on Friday, we get the earnings report out of BlackBerry, where the shares may again be active, with people looking to see as the company continuing its financial recovery. The uh, other big news development we have throughout the week is the Flash Purchasing Managers Index. These are the mid-month reports, and uh, what people are going to be looking for these from major countries are basically are we getting any improvement or any follow-through in, in the case of the US people are going to be looking for follow-through from the summer and what are the implications for the Federal Reserve Board last week the uh, the Fed of course had uh, had gone to a bit more of a hawkish uh, uh, track and uh, it's uh, looking to see will that continue could that even accelerate further and, and we could see some uh, action in US indices off of that uh, to finish up the week we have the Dow the Nasdaq and the S&P all trading up at all-time highs but there's there's some mixed uh, sentiment towards it. If we look here at client sentiment, we have uh, on the US 30, we have clients 85% short. and uh, But on the other hand here, we have clients 72% long on the NASDAQ 100. So there's some very mixed sentiment here about which way US indices might be going. Uh, on Friday, we saw the NASDAQ and the S&P touch new highs, but not really show much enthusiasm beyond that. They've gone into new high territory by a few points, but really not very much, and certainly not like the Dow. The Dow broke out to a new high and, and carried on, went for a, a 100 points and more, uh, suggesting some real follow-through. There's been issues with breadth in the U.S. market, concerns that the, the broader indices were not following at the same pace, that, that the Dow has been going up and, and suggesting a concentration of capital in a few large-cap issues. This is a theme we could see play out again this week as we try and, and as traders try and figure out, are, do the, is there a reason for the indices to carry higher, and uh, or or are they are they due for a technical correction here? Uh, we'll just take a quick look at a uh, a couple of charts here on the uh, U.S. indices. I'll bring up the U.S. 30 to uh, to begin with. And what we've seen here is uh, definitely a significant breakout for the U.S. 30. It's uh, got nice momentum, uh, RSI following it underneath. It's gone straight up for five straight days, so it could be getting due for a pause. Its initial measured uh, objective was in and around 17,350. It's starting to approach that RSI is approaching overbought. So does the U.S. 30 have enough momentum to continue carrying on? The next round, big round number for it would be around 17,5, and uh, or do we start to see? some sort of a pause or even a correction here. If you do get a retest, this was a 17,180 was the previous breakout point. There is the possibility that could get retested if this index starts to level off. If we move now and take a look at the uh, NASDAQ as, a, uh, as an example here, we have uh, the NASDAQ just touching a new high here above uh, 41.15 and then kind of just hanging around it. We have a, uh, no, a non-confirmation by the RSI, so another negative divergence, a sign of upward momentum slowing. So we could still see some choppiness uh, in the U.S. And, and people may in some ways be looking to the flash PMI for support really for the indices to, to keep the good news and, and, the, and the party going. There is a bit of vulnerability here. Uh, if we did get a pullback, it would probably be into this low 4,000 area here. 4, a big round number that's now coinciding with the 50-day average that could provide support in any kind of a, uh, a pullback. But just another note on uh, quick note on breath here as we wrap up the week. While we have the Dow up and charging to new all-time highs, we actually have the uh, Russell 2000 trading down on the day. So we are not getting the follow-through from the troops following the generals. The breadth is still shrinking in this market. Uh, indices are still looking vulnerable uh, as we head into the week. Uh, we also could see some significant action in Asia-Pacific markets this week around the flash PMI number. Uh, Chinese uh, economic data this month has been quite soft. It's weighed on commodities. It's also weighed on Asia-Pacific indices. We had This started with a, uh, a very weak tra trade number, particularly on the import side. People and, and don't forget also last week we had the PBOC uh, giving 500 billion yuan in stimulus to the five big banks to try and kickstart the economy and get it moving. People will be looking for the Chinese flash 
slash PMI for signs of is the economy still slowing, is it stabilizing, or is it starting to bounce back uh, in any meaningful kind of way. A couple of indices that could be active off of that number. Uh, first one is the Hang Seng, where we've had a, uh, a fairly significant correction already. It had become quite overbought heading into uh, August and the early part of this month. There was negative RSI divergence showed that upward momentum was slowing. Uh, since the peak earlier this month, it's tumbled pretty quickly. It's already completed a 23% retracement of the previous advance. It has found some support here a, above the 24,000 level and the 24 even to, say, 24,200 range. Some support seems to be emerging. We can't rule out a 38% retracement. That would take it back to 23,750. If you got a weak flash PMI, you could see a, a, a drop back towards this level uh, in here. If you get a rebound, then perhaps up towards this uh, resistance level here at 24 uh, 500 on on a sign of any signs of improvement uh, the other big index we'll be watching for is the Australia 200 as we uh, move here we've had a, a fairly sizable correction in this one as well we had a little double top here in August and early September it's come back off it's already become oversold on the RSI uh, and it's testing this huge uh, channel support here at 5370 which so far uh, has been holding with the index trading back above 5425 on some positive news out of China we could see this bounce back up perhaps towards 5500 maybe even 5555 a, uh, a support key support resistance level uh, for that index finally we could see a little bit of interest in uh, in Europe this week as well off of the flash PMI numbers uh, because people are starting to really wonder how aggressive is the ECB going to have to be with the uh, the planned uh, asset purchases moving towards quantitative easing more stimulus uh, out of the ECB and we ran into a bit of a tr problem last week in that uh, they were supposed to do it through a, a number of ways of stimulus the first was the targeted LTRO bond auction and uh, loans and and what happened there was that the the European banks only took up 82 billion euros worth of the loans. The street was expecting uh, 150 billion, and, and the ECB has said that they were planning on adding a trillion euros to its balance sheet uh, over the course of this program. They're off to a pretty slow start. So the, the big question out of the flash PMIs for France and Germany is going to be how much is the European e economy struggling? How much pressure is on the ECB to really get things going and really hit hard and soon with, uh, with new monetary stimulus? This could impact trading in the euro. So we'll just bring up a chart on the euro dollar here and uh, and we'll see it's been in a steady downtrend since the beginning of May it's quite oversold it pauses occasionally to work off this oversold but basically it's still in a downtrend it would need to retake 130 to uh, break out of this downtrend it hasn't done so yet uh, more recently it's actually on, heading into the uh, end of the week it's, it's momentum still pretty bearish it's it's actually trading near a new uh, its lows of the week it's lows of the week so it's still looking uh, bearish here and the next support comes in around 127.60 so uh, as we can see there's still uh, even though there's not as much in the way of news there's still a lot of follow-through still a lot of speculation in the market and and we could still see quite a bit of action in indices in Forex uh, around the world so that concludes my uh, presentation for this week and uh, we'll look forward to speaking with you again next week